good. We had a lot of things done last uh, week in practice, and I uh, felt like our team made some progress. Uh, now, uh, after a weekend off, uh, always the challenge to get refocused on uh, what you need to do to prepare for the next game, the next challenge, and um, obviously this is a tremendous challenge for us to play what is arguably uh, an undefeated team uh, to me uh, because they've been undefeated since their new coach Ed Ogeron took over. Um, they've got a very good team uh, playing very, very well right now with new energy and enthusiasm. Um, they've been a lot of really good games against these two teams through the years. It's kind of developed into a rivalry game of sorts because both been ranked over the last eight or nine years, some most of the time in the top ten. Um, so th th this is a, a real challenge game for us. Uh, we'll find out who we are, what we're made out of, and how we can compete in a very difficult circumstance. Um, you know, Ed took over this team. And, uh, they have played extremely well in the last three games in all phases of the game, on offense, defense, and special teams. They have some really outstanding players on um, both sides of the ball. Uh, Leonard Fournette, um, probably you know one of the most dynamic running backs that has played college football for a while, um, and just playing extremely well right now. And and when Geis comes in for him, there's not a lot of drop off there. And uh, the quarterback has played really well and created a lot of balance for him in the last couple of weeks. And they got a couple of really really talented receivers that are really really good players and. They got a big, strong, physical offensive line that does a great job of executing their running game. And when you get to the defensive side of it, it doesn't really get any better. They're uh, in the top ten in a lot of categories and uh, one of the most difficult teams to score on. Uh, very good in the front. Um, Arden Key is a very good rusher. Uh, Kendall Beckwith is an outstanding linebacker who leads in tackles, but uh, also runs a show out there and does a really good job. And this is probably the most athletic, talented secondary that we've had to play against, you know, all, all year long. Uh, they've got really good specialists on special teams, good returners, good kickers, good punter, um, and they've got good team speed, so they're always really good on special teams. So uh, this is a really outstanding team and a great challenge for our team, and um, we're just anxious to go to work today and get back at it with our players. We'll start over here on the right with Aaron. I'm wondering what specific ways you've seen Damian Harris improve from last year to this year. What role Burton Burns played in that? Well, I think Damian, all freshmen sort of, when they're freshmen, you know, sort of feel their way, find their way, not sure about what they're doing. Uh, we could see that Damian was a very talented guy, but I just think was not confident in what he was being asked to do. Uh, as this year has progressed, he's gotten more and more confident that he has a better understanding. You can always relate that back to some degree to um, your coach who is actually teaching you the offense and uh, how to do what you do. Uh, and he's been very productive and played with a lot of confidence and has turned out to be the kind of player that uh, we thought he could be. And we're very pleased with how he's performed for us all year long. Right now here with Michael. Kind of same topic about David asking about his vision, but what, what is it about his vision that makes it good, and how does that come for a running back? Is it natural? Well, I think that any good running back has really good vision. Um, vision is understanding of the play, how you press the hole, uh, how you make your cuts in the hole based on how the defense reacts. Um, I don't care how talented you are with the ball in your hand, if you don't have <coughs> that instinctive vision uh, to make those cuts at the right time relative to setting up the blocks, reading the blocks, running off the blocks. I don't think you're going to be productive, and Damian does that very well. Front right here with Mark. <coughs> uh, two quick ones, if I may. Uh, first, an injury update on Alphonse Taylor. Has he been cleared for contact yet? He is going to practice uh, some today. Um, we're kind of letting him, allowing him to do what he can, um, and we'll sort of take it day to day. Uh, so I can't really answer that fully. We've been off for three days, and we're going to see how he does today. And just with the guys in the secondary, since Eddie's gone down, and you had a few days to evaluate those guys, how, how are you feeling about the safety position, and how does Mika look uh, when working back there or something? 
Rodinka has worked back there some, and he's very natural at it. Um, played it in high school quite a bit. Um, so we haven't made any decisions for sure on how we'll go there. We'll just continue to work and see how it develops and um, kind of see who can handle it the best and try to put the best combination of guys out there we can relative to what we have to play against. Back on the left with John Cena. You kind of touched on this in your opening statement, the, the impact that Coach Orgeron has had on them. What, uh, I don't know how well you know him, but what kind of, um, about his personality, is he just a guy that a team can rally around? Well, I, I can't really speak or make comparisons. I really don't know what's happened. All I can see is what's happened on the field. And um, his leadership, obviously, has had some effect on that relative to uh, the team seems to be playing with a lot of energy and a lot of confidence. So uh, they've executed really well, hadn't made a lot of mistakes. So uh, I, and, and I just feel like in the last three games, they've played really, really well. I could ask a second one. On Jonathan Allen, he seems like a guy who's improved from my perspective, every single year he's been here, what, where has he gotten better even this year? Well, last year, Jonathan played because we had a lot of depth. Uh, he didn't have to play in all the circumstances of the game. Um, we sort of saved him a little bit for the pass rush situations. Uh, and he played some and alternated in there and did a really good job. But this year, he'd have to play in, in all phases of the game. and. Um, has done really well, whether we're playing against a running team or whether he's been called on the pass rush or, or whatever it's been. So uh, I, I would say that we had confidence that he could do all those things a year ago. Uh, he didn't have to do them as often, uh, but he's accepted the role of what he's had to do on this year's team uh, and done it extremely well, both run and pass. Back at the front here with Dwayne. Looking at Jalen going into a game like this where LSU is so talented on the defensive end, what's the biggest thing you want to get across to him going into a game like this? I think the number one thing that everybody has to do on our team is you got to focus on what you got to do to execute. Uh, this is not a trick them type situation. I mean, they're going to line up like they line up, and you're going to have to block them, and you're going to have to read what they do, and they're going to play man to man, and the receivers are going to have to beat them, and the quarterbacks going to have to make throws in small spaces. Um, we're going to have to protect the edges because they've got two defensive ends that both can rush. Um, so there's no magical potion for what you do relative to playing in a game like this. It comes down to your ability to execute, block, tackle, focus on the things that you need to do to execute one play at a time in the game. And that's going to be important for the quarterback to do as well, to take what the defense gives. And um, they're very, very good at what they do. And we need to be very good at what we do. Back in the front, on the other side with Ken. Just wanted to ask uh, your punt return options. Did you look at that some last week, and and how that go, and and how important is fourth down in a game like this, where field position can be so very crucial? Well, we have you know looked at our options there. We've had several guys back there that's been back there this year. Uh, Xavier Marks has been back there, um, return one for a touchdown in the game. Um, Trayvon Diggs has been back there, um, so. We'll, we'll, we'll continue to evaluate which one of those guys. I think the most important thing in games like this is uh, who's going to do the best job, especially you know, they're a spread punt team. They've got a left-footed punter. Uh, they do bulldog um, rugby punts sometimes. So the judgment of the guy back there when to field the ball or not to field it when played on a hop, you know, when to get away from it, I think that's that's really critical in uh, when you're playing against this kind of team, they do a really good job of covering. Uh, they've only had like six pump returns against them out of 32 punts or something like that. So, um, you know, I think the key thing is is possession of the ball in a game like this. I'll go on the back with Lars. Coach, when did you first realize that you had something special in Jalen? Well, I think it's a work in progress. You know, we wanted to play him in the first game, so. We, we did that uh, because we thought he had a potential to uh, do some really good things and make a contribution to the team. And I uh, certainly responded well in that game. And we sort of build on that. And you never know how a guy's going to develop and how he's going to improve, uh, especially young players, uh, how they can handle the responsibility that they have, how they can handle their ability to focus and stay with what they're doing. Um, and he 
he's done that extremely well. And I think it's going to be important for us that he continues to do that and he continues to grow and learn. And uh, there's a lot of things that we can do better on offense uh, to be a little more complete team. Uh, and I think that uh, those are the things that we focused on a week ago and a bye week to try to improve on. And uh, that's going to be something that's going to be important for us to be able to do in this game. We'll stay in the back with Cecil. Coach, I have two. First, um, Calvin Ridley's numbers aren't going to be probably this year what they were last year. How has he handled his, his role in the offense? Um, what kind of year do you feel like Calvin's had? I think he's having a great year. I, I think that um, last year we were a different kind of team. Uh, this year we haven't been able to get him the ball as frequently or as on the explosive plays that we were able to last year. Uh, it's not that we haven't tried at times, we just haven't succeeded at it. Uh, but he's handling very well. Um, first play of the game last week, you know, he's going cross field block and point on Damius Harris's run and you'd say this guy shot out of a can trying to get over there to block somebody. So he, he's actually doing the things that he needs to do to try to help the team be successful. Um, never has he shown any signs of being disappointed or frustrated. Um, he is a guy that can make explosive plays for us. And when I say that uh, there's some things that we need to improve on as an offensive team, uh, that's what I'm talking about, being able to get the ball to some of our guys on the, on the perimeter uh, that have chances to make really big plays. And second, any particularly nice birthday presents today? Not really. I only got really one. And it was one of those things where you push the the button and says that's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh my God. so I don't know if somebody's trying to tell me something. Or what. <laughs> Do you need that button? <laughs> They told me I couldn't take it home. I may need it at home when I need it here, but <laughs> two more, Alex and then Joe. Nick, I just want to ask you, what do you want to see from Tony Brown this week that makes you feel more confident giving him increased playing time going forward? I, I think that with every player uh, that you put out there and, and you give an opportunity to play, you want to know that you can trust the guy to do what he's supposed to do. Uh, and that would be no different with Tony or any other player that we put out there on the field. Um, that you know what your assignment is, you know what your key is, you know what your read is, and you're going to go do those things and we can trust you to do your job. That's what we want from any player on our team. Uh, and that's certainly what we'd like to say that we want to do and get out of Tony Brown if he gets the opportunity to play in the game. We'll wrap up in the back with Jeff. Hey, Coach, uh, I know it's a fairly small sample size and the, the personnel are still the same, but what kinds of changes have you seen to LSU's offense since uh, Coach Orgeron took over? They're using a few more, a uh, little more multiple in personnel groupings uh, and uh, just done a really good job of executing. Uh, the play action pass game has very, been very effective. Uh, I think it's um, not real complicated for the quarterback, but he's done a really, really good job of executing and uh, tying the play action passes with their great running game and making explosive plays down the field with some very, very good receivers. Um, so they're a little more open, I would say, in terms of what they're doing. And it's, you know, paid some dividends in the balance that they've been able to create uh, by doing that. Thanks, Coach. All right, thank you. Thank you.